Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Waters and I'm a second year PhD student in the Faculties of Humanities and Social Sciences. I'd just like to say I would welcome feedback both verbally on Adobe Connect. I'm also happy to take it via, um, via the written responses in the chat box or indeed instant responses to the presentation via Twitter and you'll see my Twitter handle on this first page, that's at SRA Waters. I'm keen to engage with new technologies and learning approaches in my teaching. The use of Twitter for live tweeting information, course hashtags to allow for engagement before and after lectures, and the interaction that it encourages from students who might otherwise not have the chance to be vocal in class, for some of its many merits. The use of Twitter also provides continual feedback and engagement from students, and those from outside of the university bubble, which I believe is invaluable. Although social media, like anything else, brings with it dangers such as the blurring of boundaries, overall, the merits of the interaction it encourages outweigh the issues. I've also been part of Twitter projects which use Twitter accounts to recreate literary characters, such as the Birkbeck Our Mutual Friend project, which you can learn more about by clicking on the link on the slide. And Social media projects such as this allow for an integrated learning approach, and one which organically breeds engagement from lecturers and students alike, ensuring a collaborative experience. So please do feel free to engage with this presentation during and afterwards via Twitter as well as on Adobe Connect. The teaching I wish to reflect on in this session is a micro-teaching class I recently gave. As with many others on this course, my higher education teaching experiences is limited Although I have had experience of teaching at several secondary schools, both in Buckingham and Vista, as well as being involved in the running of postgraduate seminars. If you would like to see the full presentation I gave for the micro-teaching session, please click on the small slide you see in the left-hand corner, slide 3 of the PowerPoint version of this presentation. You won't be able to access it, unfortunately, direct from this YouTube link. Although I was giving a class in a specific area of Shakespeare studies, I also wanted to draw on the cross-disciplinary elements of the subject matter I was considering, given the interdisciplinary group of students attending the class. This relates to the second of Chickering and Gamson's seven points, that is, the creation of learning communities and groups. As an interdisciplinary researcher myself, I am keen to work between disciplines and encourage students to do so too, both within the lecture context and also taking it further to consider the application of specific subject knowledge in the wider context of the real world. Furthermore, a group of students from a cross-section of disciplines bring different subject approaches together and can engage topics and discussions in ways that single discipline students working together cannot quite capture in the same way. The micro-teaching session was designed to encourage group engagement and as such I included several group activities. The first demonstrated the importance of building the learning communities I've just discussed as I ask students to break into twos and define adaptation and appropriation in a minute before feeding back. This allowed different discipline definitions to be mixed and therefore the students themselves were able to come up with a definition of appropriation that was meaningful to them and could then be applied in a specific Shakespeare context. It also gave opportunity to those who were less confident to share ideas in a smaller and less intimidating way I hope before reporting back with their other peers. With the ice broken, as it were, between students and tutor alike, I then moved on to showing them a video of an IKEA commercial. Now this may sound strange in the context of a Shakespeare lecture, but bear with me. If you're curious as to which advert I'm referring to, I've provided the link on the PowerPoint, so you can check it out at your own convenience later on. The video of someone dreaming about beds also features lines from Shakespeare's The Tempest. And I wanted to show the students the way in which the theoretical study of appropriation of Shakespeare in a lecture hall can be applied in the wider world as it appears on their TV screens. This combines the Brooks graduate attributes of digital and information literacy, given the multimedia format, academic literacy, that is applying subject specific skills within an academic context and then taking that knowledge beyond the classroom, and active citizenship since it shows how subject-specific training can be engaged in local and global contexts. Furthermore, this activity also demonstrates the way in which, through reflection of my practice in the light of critical literature, 
I've begun to change my teaching approach. This activity can be seen in the context of the cold cycle, through the use of a concrete example, which I hope the students were able to relate to and respond to. Incorporating a pragmatic as well as a theoretical approach in a practice-based discipline such as theatre studies is not uncommon, but the study of appropriation and adaptation more generally tends to be a theory-driven discipline, but, on reflection, it seems that the incorporation of interactive elements and real-life examples demonstrates the importance of the topic beyond the classroom and shows its applicability. When planning this session, I made sure I set, as well as my own aim and objective, a clear learning outcome. This was then supplemented by a further learning outcome, that which I turned above and beyond, a learning outcome aimed at students who expressed a keen interest in the subject, or those who were high achievers and needed further materials to push them. Although I didn't begin the class articulating a learning outcome, I hope that in the course of the seminar it became clear and remained with the students following the class. I'm also aware, as was raised um, during my presentation um, in the formative uh, feedback session, that a learning outcome, of course, extends beyond the sen seminar context. And so I need, to, I need to bear in mind that although I might put the basics in place in the class, the students then have to supplement this with additional hours of study and so on, so that the learning outcome is more of a continuous concept than just something that is achieved within a one or two hour class session. I was conscious of providing con concrete examples for the students beyond an advert, so I also bought in different books which illustrated Shakespeare's appropriation from students from children's versions of Hamlet to Shakespeare's Star Wars. I wanted to engage with different kinds of learners, kinesthetic, visual, oral and read-write, through a variety of tasks in the seminar while ensuring the main learning outcome remained central. It was good to be able to gauge student engagement and interest in the subject matter of the class through verbal interactions and group work activities, as well as through the more subtle but just as important visual signs such as smiles, eye contact and body language conveying concentration. This micro-teaching task was followed by time for verbal and written feedback, which was very valuable. This feedback came from peers, students of the class or fellow PhD students, as well as a colleague examiner. This enabled me to reflect on the session in the light of the feedback I received, as well as my own personal reflections on the seminar. The positive feedback demonstrated to me where the strengths of my teaching practice are. For instance, I had good feedback concerning my use of audiovisual material on the group activity at the beginning of the session, and received positive comments on the different kinds of activities I included in the seminar, which adequately catered to different kinds of learners. However, in terms of future practice in higher education teaching, there are clear areas that I need to work on, as highlighted both by verbal and written feedback. I need to make sure I pitch my teaching at the right level for my students, bearing in mind the dangers of assuming pre-knowledge of the subject area. This is particularly pertinent in the context of an interdisciplinary group of students. Furthermore, cultural knowledge and pre-knowledge must also be taken into account, given the growing global community of learners that the student population represents. Both of these chime with the second point of Chickering and Gamson, that of building learning communities, and this is a factor which I need to reflect on when preparing lecture material and content. I also need to be conscious of different student needs and ensure I give sufficient time for student feedback and interaction so that the process of teaching is truly a dialogue. I believe through a combination of lecture style and group work activities, this valuable feedback, which I have had a chance to reflect on, can be implemented. Brookfield's teaching through four, Brookfield highlights the importance of critical reflection on one's teaching through four key lenses. And considering my teaching in a critically reflective light has highlighted to me the value of considering my teaching from a number of angles. My experience as a learner of engaging lectures with limited group work, of course, affects my teaching practice but I'm also aware of the need to cater to different student needs, as not all students learn best through lectures. Furthermore, sitting in on colleagues' lectures has enabled me to witness a good range of teaching practices. As I have highlighted, the feedback on my teaching practice by learners and colleagues has given me invaluable pointers on how to take my teaching practice forward. Viewing my teaching in the light of the cold cycle, I hope it is clear that I've begun to try to reflect on the critical literature 
and the way in which it can benefit and be implemented in my teaching practice. I look forward to continuing to learn from colleagues, learners and critical literature alike as my own experience as a teacher in higher education grows. Thank you for listening to me and I'm really looking forward to your questions, answers and feedback.